Hey there, my name is Jason, and I really like building gaming computers at affordable prices. I find it really exciting to try to get the most performance out of the least amount of money. So let's go over everything inside this $600 budget gaming PC today, and hopefully give you some ideas on how you can replicate it. But first, a quick word from this video sponsor. When you install Windows on your Steam Deck, or any other PC for that matter, you're going to need to activate it to unlock all the settings. Why spend a ton of money for a code when you can use the sponsor of today's video, SCD Key? You can purchase Windows keys at a large discount, and to get 25% off your order, use code JASON, that's J-A-S-O-N, to get 25% off your order. After purchasing, you'll get your code pretty much instantly and be able to unlock your computer's full potential. And remember that all Windows 10 Pro users can upgrade to Windows 11 for free at any time in the future using these keys. Just take your code, go to your Windows activation menu, pop it in, and boom. Windows is activated, and you should be on your way. Thanks to SCD Key. To start off, let's talk about the motherboard and CPU choice. I already knew what kind of power I was looking at for this price range, and I didn't want to go to the bottom of the budget barrel choices like a Core i3 processor or an older Ryzen. Even though I love those CPUs and I use them often, I wanted to play with a little more power since we have some more wiggle room in the budget. A DDR5 capable computer was kind of out of the question, since the prices on those components are still pretty expensive and there isn't much to find in the used market right now. So I decided to go with a Ryzen 5 5600X a very capable AM4 processor that has six cores and 12 threads, which is more than enough to handle any game and stream at the same time, and can handle a max boost clock up to 4.6 gigahertz. I know that AM4 is now officially a dead platform, but at this price range, we can't really move up to AM5. But at least there is somewhat of an upgrade path, as you can always upgrade to the Ryzen 5800X3D in the future if needed, which is still a pretty insanely good CPU even in 2023. Now to pair with this CPU is probably my most used motherboard of all time the Gigabyte B450M VS3H Wi-Fi, a totally capable AM4 motherboard that has pretty much everything you'd want out of a standard motherboard. Four DIMM slots, integrated Wi-Fi, and a stable B450 chipset with adequate VRM cooling. I'd say the one downside is that it only supports PCIe Gen 3, so we won't be able to use those blazing fast Gen 4 drives, but honestly, unless you are constantly moving large files all day, you probably won't notice. Gen 3 is plenty fast as well. I usually try to stick to online retail shops so you guys can replicate these builds, but there was a deal offline that was simply too good to pass up. I'm sure y'all have heard of Micro Center, the small chain electronics store that likes to sponsor all the little YouTube PC guys, but then you go to their website and you realize they don't ship most of their inventory. They had a combo deal that paired this 5600X and V450M motherboard together for only $190 which is already 60 bucks cheaper than you can get on Amazon. But I used one of their new customer coupons to bring the total price down to $165, a fantastic price for a brand new CPU and motherboard. That coupon really came in clutch. And you know, it's the darndest thing. I've been a new customer to Micro Center about five times now. Thanks for the great deal, Micro Center. For the RAM, there are a plentiful amount of cheap budget RAM on Amazon that would have worked just fine in this build. And if you really want to push the budget, just grab this pair of 3200 Megatrends for Silicon Power RAM for only 30 bucks. I've used these in a lot of builds in the past and they work fantastically. But I wanted to get a little fancier on this rig and grab something with slightly higher speed. So I picked up 16 gigs of Patriot Viper Steel memory, which is clocked at 3600 Megatransfers per second and has some gorgeous RGB on top. This RAM set me back 40 bucks, which is a little bit more than I wanted to spend, but I think it's worth it for the RGB and the slightly faster speed. Because everyone knows when you get AMD, you got to get that super fast RAM to make your PC go brr. The 5600X comes with a Wraith Stealth Cooler out of the box, and historically these Ryzen coolers are actually totally capable with the CPUs they are paired with and would be able to keep things working perfectly fine for years to come. And even though these look a thousand times better than their Intel counterpart, I'm starting to just get bored of the looks of these. And at this price point, I feel like we can go aftermarket to really bring the look of the PC up a few notches. So I grabbed a Thermalright Assassin X120 SE on Amazon for only $18. It's a single 120mm fan air cooler with four heat pipes and addressable RGB. I've used these in the past, and honestly, the performance is just as good as any other single fan cooler. So I know it's gonna do great. I know this is technically not a necessary addition to the PC, but guys, not everything in life is about performance. Not everything in life is about going the cheapest route possible. You need to make decisions based on your own budget and your own goals. So for me, this $18 air cooler was money well spent. Storage was a no-brainer on this machine. We aren't just gonna stick a tiny SATA SSD into this and call it a day. Come on, we can do better than that. 
Storage has just gotten cheaper and cheaper every day. So there's no more excuses anymore for not just going with at least one terabyte. I decided to buy this Intel 670p NVMe Gen 3 SSD. It's a really highly rated NVMe SSD that seemingly goes on sale every other week. It's a QLC drive that pretty much everyone on Reddit agrees is about as good as it gets for the price. And with the increasing size of video game files, this one terabyte drive really has its work cut out for it. I grabbed this guy on Amazon for only $35. Now we need a case to put all this junk in. And as always, there are a plethora of budget MATX cases available, but I had some minimum requirements to be considered for this build. One, it has to be black, which is part of the aesthetic I chose for this build. Two, it has to have addressable RGB fans already pre-installed because I'm lazy. Three, it has to be MATX. I know there are a lot of budget, full-size ATX cases that would technically work with our motherboard, but again, we are at the price point where we shouldn't have to settle for a small motherboard in a giant case. I've done it in the past and I'm just not feeling it for this build. I found this BitPhoenix Nova Mesh MATX case on Amazon for only $60. It checks all the boxes and doesn't look as budget looking as other $60 cases, but they only had white in stock when I was buying this and I really wanted a black case for this build. BitPhoenix has an online shop on Jawa.gg for the exact same price. And I luckily ran into some of the Jawa staff while at LTX recently and they hooked me up with a $20 coupon. So I was able to bring the cost of this case down to only $40. And that's all in because Jawa doesn't charge tax and BitPhoenix offered free shipping. The case is what you'd expect in this budget. It comes with a fan header and RGB, very light feeling, and basically no room for cable management, but it's good enough for the price we paid. Shopping for power supplies has been a real nightmare lately. I don't know if there's a shortage or something, but it seems like there just aren't as many different choices these days. And the ones that are plentiful are either insanely expensive or are complete fire hazards. So the real game here is to choose a power supply that is high enough on the tier list to satisfy nerds in the comments and not so expensive that know-it-alls say we wasted our money. There wasn't much to choose from, so I grabbed the 600 watt Thermaltake Tough Bauer GX2 from Amazon. This is a non-modular gold rated power supply that had some good ratings and comes with a five-year warranty. The GX2 is tier C on the PSU tier list, so it will be reliable enough for our uses today. And 600 watts will be more than enough for everything in this machine and leave some headroom for a GPU upgrade in the future. And shout out to Amazon for going absolutely ham on this PSU box before delivering it to me. It's so cool of them to pre-destroy the box for me so I wouldn't have to worry about recycling it. I also decided to get some PSU extensions for only 15 bucks on Amazon to add some extra aesthetics to our build. By the way, if $600 is a little out of your budget for just the computer, go and check out this video where I do an entire PC gaming setup that includes computer, accessories, and even the desk for only $350. Finally, let's talk about the graphics card. With the 5600X powering our rig, this opened us up to pretty much most video cards on the market. I believe we could have squeezed in a brand new card if our budget was $700, but I wanted to try my best to get as close to $600 as I could. The RX 6700 XT has gotten really famous lately as being the best priced performance card, since it can be picked up brand new for only $330 on Amazon. And that comes with a free copy of Bethesda's upcoming game Starfield. If I knew I was gonna buy that game in the future, I would have definitely just bought it new, as the game is valued at $70, and that would bring the price down to around $260 for the card. But I probably won't end up playing it. So I went looking in the used market to see if I could get a better deal. My local Facebook marketplace was kind of a bust for graphics cards lately, but I did find someone on eBay selling a Sapphire 6700 XT for only $250, and that included free shipping. I'm glad I jumped on it when I did because the seller increased the price to 300 a few days later, which is totally not worth it at that price. You should just buy new. But for $250, this card is a no-brainer. 12 gigs of VRAM, triple fan cooling setup, and will fit inside of our MATX case without any issues. And since we now have an AMD graphics card paired with an AMD processor, we're able to unlock AMD Smart Access Memory, which is essentially an increase in FPS of about five to 15% absolutely for free. Three hours later. I have the BIOS configured to enable Smart Access Memory. I got the RAM overclocked using XMP and I just installed Windows 10 and I got everything updated. But I need to activate my Windows to unlock all the settings. And you better believe I'm not gonna pay $100 for a key. So I'm just gonna go over and grab a key at scdkey.com. And I want Windows 10 Pro. So I'm gonna grab the MS Windows 10 Pro OEM CD key global. So right now it's 2190, which is already a pretty good deal compared to like $100 from Windows directly. But I'm gonna use my own code to get an even more bigger discount. So I'm gonna type in J-A-S-O-N into the promotion code area. And using my own code to buy things is like uh, that famous story of Jay-Z drinking his own champagne at the club. Remember that? And hit pay now. 
get the key and boom, there it is. So you just copy this, right click, copy. We're going to go to change product key, right click, paste the code we just got here, hit next. Windows is activated and that took like three minutes. So be sure to use that code to get 25% off. Let's get some beauty shots of this bad boy and then go over the benchmarks and the part list breakdown. So we came in a little over budget, but this rig looks beautiful and games at 1440p amazingly well. If you wanted to come in a little under budget, you could go with a 6650 XT for the GPU and your performance wouldn't suffer too much. Or if you wanted to go NVIDIA, you could grab an RTX 3060 Ti or even a 3070 if you're lucky. But for our build here, I think this is about as good as it gets for $600 right now. And I'm really happy with the results. If you liked this video, please drop a like below. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching.